Hello friends, I'm Abby from Abby's Bookish Life and today I'm trying out a new system for my monthly wrap-ups. So usually for my monthly wrap-ups, I tell you guys a little bit about all of the books I read, what I rated them, um, my thoughts, the synopsis. What I want to try out is instead of just listing all the books that I read this month, I decided that I'm going to be ranking the reads. So I will be putting the books in order from my least favorite book of the month to my most favorite and not talking about my star ratings. Because I've noticed that with a five star rating system, there are like in my mind, different levels of five stars. So there's a five star that is an all time favorite. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. And then there are five stars that were just really, really good books and they deserve five stars, but they're not my all time favorites. A four star is still a great book. I really, really enjoyed it and would highly recommend it. Even three stars, three stars means that it was a good book. And I just noticed that because I do so much research into the books that I read and I pick books that I truly believe that I'll enjoy, I tend to rate things highly. So I'm not going to give you the breakdowns for this month, but for the month of July, I had nothing below a three star and I only had two three star books. So I had a great reading month, but giving you my star rating for that is it's super helpful. So I'm going to be ranking my reads from least favorite to most favorite. This month, I read a total of 28 books. This is an all time high for me. I cannot believe how many books I read. And that's not even counting Lore Olympus, which is a web comic that I read this month. I didn't count it just because I couldn't fit it into my system as an audiobook, ebook, or physical book because it is an online comic and it comes, it's not in a book format, it's more in like a series format. So I didn't count it. But besides that, I still read 28 books. In that, I read 13 physical books, 6 ebooks, and 9 audiobooks. So I'm actually going to start with a couple books that I won't be including in my ranking system. Moving forward, the books that I won't be including are going to be books that are memoirs or nonfiction books, just because those are not necessarily books that I can rank the same way I can rank fiction. So I have had two books that I read that were memoirs. And the first one is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. I listened to this on audiobook and it is narrated by the author George M. Johnson. It follows the story of George who grew up as a black, queer, gender non-conforming, or even non-binary person. And it follows them from childhood up through adulthood, more um, like college age. And this is considered a young adult memoir. I absolutely loved this. It was so informative. And honestly, the prologue, the introduction or the foreword of the book, I cried within the first few minutes of listening. It's just such a genuine and beautiful piece of work. And it helped me learn so much about an area of education or education system and an area of life that I just didn't know enough about and doesn't get enough attention. I absolutely loved it. I would highly recommend to everybody. The second memoir type book that I read that I will not be ranking is Here For It by R. Eric Thomas. And this was the funniest memoir that I've ever read. It was so hilarious. It's a collection of essays about saving your soul in America. And again, it is a story of growing up as a queer black man in our society today. And our Eric Thomas is a comedic writer for L.com and he has a segment called Eric Reads the News. So some of that is brought in. There are many stories about growing up in there. There are stories about being lost and trying to find your way. There were educational things for me. And overall, it was just a hilarious, inspirational book. And it included so many pop culture references and musical references, movie references that hit home for me that I found myself like laughing along. I got all the references. So if that is something that you're interested in or that area of education is something that you think you need a little bit more on, please consider checking out Here For It. It was such a great memoir. Before I rank the reads, let me just remind you that I only had two three star books this month. Everything else was a four star book or higher and three stars are still great books. So although some of these books will be lower on the list, 
I would recommend every book that I read this month. So as I go on forward, please keep that in mind that even books that are low on the list, I didn't dislike them. So let's get into ranking the reads for the month of July. So starting at 26th place, is City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. This is a historical fiction about a girl named Vivian who is 19 and goes to live with her aunt in New York City. Her aunt is running a theater and it's set in the time period of during World War II. So it is definitely a historical fiction. It's including a lot of that aspect as well as some showgirl experiences, some experiences living as a rambunctious and a kind of newly forming young adult adult in this big city and it's all about Vivian and the adventures she gets into in her summer in New York with her aunt at this theater company and kind of how it shapes her life forever. City of Girls is at the bottom of my list only because I personally just didn't get invested in the story which I thought that I would I truly did because it's a story about a young woman who goes to New York and lives her life surrounded by theater I thought that it would be something I really connected to the story read very much like an autobiography and there were points where I wasn't sure why the story was being told. It was a great story, it was gripping, there were many adventures, things happened that broke my heart, that made me laugh. It was a great story, it was written really well, but just overall I didn't connect with it and it wasn't the right book for me. 25th place, In Five Years by Rebecca Surley. This is an adult romance novel that focuses on a woman who is very type A, very much a planner named Danny who has her life planned out. She has goals set, she's dating this wonderful guy, and she plans her life out for the next five years. She knows exactly what she wants. And she goes to sleep one night and has a dream where it's five years in the future, she's with another man, she's not where she thought she was, she has no idea what's going on. When she wakes up, she's back in time five years. So she doesn't know what is gonna lead her to that point. She's kind of trying to avoid it and her life follows a very unexpected path. This book was really interesting. The concept gripped me, and I would say maybe 60% of the way through, I was fully hooked. And the reason it's just at the bottom of the list is that it wasn't what I expected. I expected a like steamy, unexpected romance. It ended up being not much of a romance and more of a friendship piece. And because I wasn't expecting it to take that turn and it just made me feel sad and like very melancholy, it wasn't my favorite read of the month. 24th place is Beloved by Toni Morrison. This book focuses on a woman named Seth who has escaped from slavery and is living in a house that appears to be haunted. She is living there with her daughter, Denver, and it really focuses on their lives with this haunting in the house what caused it, what's happening, how they move forward, and it's essentially just a relationship piece and a important story about trauma and grief and dealing with that. I loved this book. It was not my favorite writing style just because some of the chapters, it took a while for me to figure out who was talking because it switches perspectives. And at some points it feels more like a fever dream than it feels like a, like a piece of fiction. But I absolutely loved the concept. The story was amazing. And the information and the impact it left me with is lasting. And I'm very happy that I read it because although the writing style didn't connect with me as much as more traditional writing styles do, I still think I got from the piece what was intended to be taken away. And I feel very moved by the piece even now after I had finished it so long ago. In 23rd place is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This is a classic novel about Lizzie and Mr. Darcy and it focuses on their kind of hate to love romance trope in Elizabethan England where they are facing a lot of societal pressures and a lot of pressures to get married in general. Really it focuses on, on Lizzie who is kind of an outspoken spunky woman and Mr. Darcy who's kind of shy but comes across as mean and cruel at times and how they fall in love and face this hate to love romance trope. I truly enjoyed this book. It is not one that I 
felt myself super attached to until maybe halfway through. I would say the first half reads a lot like a typical classic that you would imagine. A lot of talk about society, a lot of heightened language that I didn't connect fully with. But by the end, I was really invested in the relationships and the story that was being told. I'm so happy that I made it through and it did inspire me to pick up other classics. In 22nd place this month is Conjure Women by Afia Atakora. And this has a very similar plot to Beloved in terms of in terms of it being set in the similar time period. So it's set during the Civil War, right before slavery is abolished, during wartime, and during what they call freedom time, where slavery has been abolished and the black people of this community are living free. It focuses on three women, Rue, Miss Maybell, and their master's daughter, Varina, and kind of how their lives are all woven together and how those bonds last so long and affect them throughout their lives. It also focuses on in the freedom time where there is a baby that's born with white scaly skin and fully black eyes and the community is feeling as if this baby is cursed and has brought a curse upon their village. And Rue and her mother, Miss Maybell, are considered conjure women. So people expect them to kind of perform magic and have the answers and be able to heal people in every way. And so it focuses on that as well. This story was absolutely beautiful and had so much important information and fantastical, flowery writing. The story really stuck with me and especially Rue's story, who I feel is the main voice that you're hearing throughout the book and the main line that you carry with you at the end. Now, of course, her interactions with Miss Maybell and Verena all kind of tie together and bring different and important perspectives, but I think Rue is the one for me who stands out as the character that I wanted the most to succeed. I do also love the um, spirituality aspects in this book, how we can see the importance of ancestors and spirits and spirituality connecting to something bigger than yourself, even if that something is the community around you or your parents or something like that. Overall, it was just a very gripping and important story. It left an impact on me. I loved the writing and this was Afia Atakora's debut novel. And I'm so excited to see what else she writes because this was beautiful and I would highly recommend it to people who have read Beloved or Toni Morrison's writing and love it. Please check her out if you are interested in a story like this because I truly loved it and also it's one of the most beautiful books that I've ever seen. In 21st place is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. This is a short science fiction romance piece about two characters, Red and Blue, both of whom are females, and they are fighting in a time travel war. They are serving two different sides so essentially they're enemies and they're communicating through letters back and forth to each other and eventually their desire to beat the other person transforms into a friendship which then transforms into a romance. Essentially they are falling in love in a time where if they are caught communicating with each other they are going to be killed and it comes down to choosing your side of the war or the person you love. This has some of the most beautiful writing that I've ever read, some of the most descriptive, atmospheric writing. It's very hard to describe to you because it's just so otherworldly, honestly, is the only word I can think to describe it. The descriptions and the emotions that are being shown through this writing are so moving and I found myself really wanting both characters to succeed, which they're on opposite sides of the war. I will say this book was very confusing for a lot of it because a lot of the war aspect, the science fiction aspect, is not ever really explained. The focus is more on their romance and it's kind of ambiguous as to what the war is about and how they're doing the things that they're doing and what it all means. So that aspect was a little bit confusing, but I still am finding myself thinking about it and thinking about how it all wraps up and basically how love transcends time and death and war and all of those things that are set out to stop 
love. It's just so fascinating. It was such a beautiful, moving piece, and it was short. So if you're looking for something short and flowery and science fiction-y that has a little bit of a political aspect, maybe consider checking it out because it was pretty dang good. In 20th place is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. This is a thriller novel that is about two sisters, Lydia and Claire, and these two sisters are estranged. They haven't spoken to each other in many, many years, and their sister, Julia, went missing with no solutions many years ago as well. Her disappearance tore the family apart. And so Lydia and Claire are now estranged and have taken two very different paths in life. However, another young girl in the community has disappeared and the both of them start to think that maybe there's a link there. And as they investigate into it, many twists and turns are taken and some crazy findings take place. So this book, the beginning wrecked me a little bit and then by the end of the book I just was fully in shock. It's very hard to describe this book other than if you like Criminal Minds please check it out because it was very reminiscent of a Criminal Minds story although without the like detective viewpoint. It's told back and forth between Lydia and Claire but just the twists and turns that it takes and the pacing all seemed like a Criminal Minds episode. And please, if you are somebody who has some trigger warnings that you like to know before entering a book, if you're triggered by specific things, please read the trigger warnings for this because there are a lot of them. This book is very graphic, very gross, very hard to read at some points. So if you would like trigger warnings, please look those up before reading the book because it's one that would definitely need it. This book, the twists it took, everything about it has stuck with me because it was dark. It took turns I didn't expect. There were times where I had no idea what was going on. You don't know who to believe at points. It's just so fascinating and I truly enjoyed it. It's not the most fast paced thriller that I've read, but it is very, very good. In 19th place this month is Black Flamingo by Dean Otta. And this is a story about a mixed race gay teen who finds his wings pun intended, as a drag artist when he gets to university, and his drag artist name is The Black Flamingo. The story is all about embracing uniqueness, showing the world your true colors, who you really are, when it feels like you are so separated from the world that you can't connect or relate to them. This story is a young adult story, and it's written in verse, so it was like listening, because I listened to the audiobook, it was like listening to poetry. I truly, truly loved this book. It's very fast paced. I read it. I listened to it all in one day and I truly enjoyed it. So if you like books in verse, if you like stories about coming of age in a world where you're maybe different and not as socially accepted, if you like learning about the childhood and young adulthood of people who are different from you and learning their perspective and how they grew up, please check out this book. In 18th place is The Last of the Moon Girls by Barbara Davis, and this is a new mystery story that focuses on a girl named Lizzie who is now the last of the Moon Girls after her grandmother Althea passes away. And Althea owns the Moon Girl farm, which Lizzie left to go to New York so that she could pursue her dream of designing perfume. And now she's come back to the farm to kind of wrap everything up, sell the farm, and wrap up that area of her life. But when she gets there, she realizes that she needs to clear her grandmother's name from an eight-year-old double murder of two young girls in the society who were found in her grandmother's pond. Lizzie is 100% certain that her grandmother didn't commit these crimes, but her grandmother is the one who was unofficially blamed by the town and was kind of ostracized because of these murders. Now, it's not just because of the murders. They're also ostracized as a family because the Moon Girls, all the way back for generations, have had special gifts, is what they call them. And they're essentially powers that have to do with the senses. So there's a little bit of a fantasy element in there as well. This book was really, really good. I would say as far as a mystery, it was a little bit predictable. But what I truly loved about this book was the romance in it. Andrew, the main romantic interest, was such a beautifully written 
man. He's so open with his feelings and like the communication. He's always open to communication and is trying to have an open dialogue about everything that happens. And so that was just really refreshing to read a story with a man that was really pushing to have these conversations and not closing down and going away when things get hard. I also loved the story in terms of a family of all women for generations that all have a special gift and are using it for the betterment of others. It is such an empowering women's story and I loved Lizzie's character. She was just so fierce and really worked hard to make her own way and follow her own dreams. So I really enjoyed it. I got it as my Amazon First Reads pick, so I read it on ebook, but I think it is coming out very soon, so please check it out. In 17th place is Pendragon Book One, The Merchant of Death. This was a reread for me, and if you would like my full thoughts on this, please check out my young adult vlog. But overall, I truly enjoyed this. It was fascinating to reread it and relive in that world again. Again, my full thoughts are over on my rereading young adult favorites part two, so go check it out. 16th place this month is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, and this is a story about two sisters, Camino and Yahaira, and neither of them know the other exists. One lives in New York, and the other one lives in the Dominican Republic, and they are half-sisters. They share the same father, and he goes back and forth between the two families, but those girls don't know that the other one exists. Now, when a plane crash happens and their father dies in that plane crash, they find each other and start this relationship that they have spent so many years of their life not getting. So it's really a story about family, about grief. This story also features a lesbian romance, so it does have some of that representation in there as well, but that's not the main focus of the book. This book was written in verse and I listened to the audiobook. I love listening to Elizabeth Acevedo's books on audiobook because she narrates them herself. The spoken word aspect of it is beautiful. The writing is always fantastic. I just truly enjoyed it so much. I could feel the grief and the tension and all of the experiences that the characters were going through in this story. I really felt for both of them and it was very hard and special to hear both sides of their lives and understand how both of them were grieving in completely separate ways but also the same ways. They both knew completely different fathers but had the same father so it was very interesting and beautifully written. 15th place this month is Uglies by Scott Westerfeld. Again, this was part of my rereading YA Favorites Part 2 video, so please check it out. But it was so great to go back and read this. I haven't read it since I was in middle school because it came out in 2005, I believe, and I read it right after it came out. So I loved getting re-immersed into this world and I truly enjoyed the experience of rereading it. Number 14 on my list is The Opposite of Loneliness by Marina Keegan. This is a collection of essays, both fiction and nonfiction. So I am just putting it in this spot on the ranking because of the fiction portion. So this is, as I said, a collection of essays, but what makes it special is it is written by a young woman who was a literature major at Yale University, and she actually passed away five days after graduating from Yale in a car accident. And her family and professors all thought that it would be a shame for her work to go to waste. And so they all got together and worked as a team to put together a book of her essays that she wrote while she was in college. And so, as I said, it's a collection of fiction and nonfiction about her life and about um, her experiences. So, as far as the fiction goes, they were so good. They all had a very different message. They all kind of talked about something different. But each of the stories was like a really short story and so many of them were impactful and I just really truly enjoyed reading about them. Some of my favorites, I actually wrote down the names of my favorite ones from the book because I really enjoyed them. Um, the first one is The Ingenue, which is a story about a girl who goes to see her boyfriend in a, a summer stock show, which is like theater that happens during the summer. And it talks about a lot of insecurity that she had about the, her relationship and about 
um, watching the person you were dating kiss somebody else on stage and have this like relationship with a group of people that you don't get to be a part of and how difficult that can be. And so that hit home really hard for me because I've been in that situation and it's a tough situation to be in. So it was kind of cool to see somebody else writing a story about it. Some of my other favorites are Why We Care About Whales, Even Artichokes Have Doubts, Song for the Special, and the title article called The Opposite of Loneliness. So overall, it was great. I really enjoyed it. The nonfiction side was really sweet too, and some of, I think maybe two of the ones I mentioned are nonfiction. So please check it out. It's really sweet. It's definitely like a very coming of age story. Number 13 is The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Donata Petras. This is a really sweet story written about a girl named Audrey who lives in Trinidad and a girl named Mabel who lives in America. And Audrey's mom finds out about a secret girlfriend that she has and sends her to live in America with her father. And so Audrey is dealing with trying not to lose touch of her roots. She's very spiritual. Then there's the story of Mabel who is kind of a tomboy teen in America and is kind of struggling to figure out her own sexuality and her own feelings when Audrey, who is her father's best friend's daughter, comes to America and they form this friendship and a romance. And it is just a really beautiful story. Um, it took some really like heartbreaking turns that I didn't expect and it's just one that the lyrical, beautiful prose that was used stuck with me at the end of the book and I couldn't wait to read more. I listened to it on audiobook. I highly recommend it. It was fantastic. It focuses on so many different ideas, including the idea of Audrey coming to America and not knowing how to fit in there, as well as Mabel trying to figure out her own identity and sexuality, how to deal with loss and grief, and it talks about the justice system and overall it just is something that I can't stop thinking about and so I would highly recommend it. It is a young adult book but it's so fantastic. Number 12 is Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. This is a steamy romance novel that is a taboo romance novel about Jordan who is 19 years old and Pike who is 38 years old and on top of that age difference which is already a little taboo in as far as a trope goes, there is the additional element of Jordan dating Pike's son, Cole. So the book starts with Jordan and Cole dating and needing a place to live. And so they move in with Pike and Jordan and Pike have an immediate connection to each other. Feelings start building up, but neither of them can act on it because they don't want to hurt Cole. It was steamy. It had, I'd say as far as like a full story plot goes, like work characters, all of that, the writing, everything. I would say it's like a four star, but the steam factor is a five star, if you know what I'm saying. It was, I mean, it was exactly what I was looking for. It was a nice, like, end of the summer romance, exactly what you would imagine a taboo romance to be like. And so it is fantastic. I felt a connection to Jordan, and I really felt for her and the struggles she was going through, like new adult struggles where you're trying to find your place in the world, and she came from a really rough background and is trying to get herself out of it. And so I really felt for her the whole time and it switches perspectives between Jordan and Pike and I love that about the book as well but you get to see not only her side of the story but also his. Number 11 is Call Me By Your Name by Andre Osman. This book absolutely destroyed me. It tugs on every single one of your heartstrings. Again, the steam factor. <sighs> It was so steamy. It is a male-male romance, in case you didn't know. It's a romance between two characters, Oliver and Elios, and it is told in Elios's point of view the entire time. And Elios is a teenager, and Oliver is an, a, a college-aged man who is staying at his parents' guest house for the summer in Greece. And so it does have a little like travel factor for me. It was so great to read about about another culture and kind of see how things are done in Elios's family and in his town and they went out traveling and got to see some of the sites and so that was really fun and it's kind of an immediate connection that they have and the story is told kind of about how they deal with that especially when they don't communicate well with each other that they have feelings for each other there's a lot of miscommunication 
Overall, it was an absolutely heartbreaking story. Overall, the writing is fantastic. It's very melancholy and sad and gave me very like sad boy vibes, but I really enjoyed it. And again, the audiobook was great. I highly recommend it. Be careful listening to it around children. It gets steamy. Number 10 is Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. This was a quick, speedy thriller novel. I'm sure most of you know the story of Bird Box by now, but essentially the story is that there is a creature outside that if you look at it, you commit suicide. And so everyone has to basically be blindfolded or cover their eyes or close their eyes when going outside or you'll die. And it focuses on the story of Mallory, who is pregnant when this all starts going down. And she finds a place at this home where people are gathering. There are five or six people in the house that are trying to like band together and stay safe. And she kind of makes her home there. And it switches back and forth between her in the past, kind of getting to that point, and the present where she has two children and they are traveling down the river to try to get to this community that she thinks will be a safe haven for them. So it was very fast paced, very intense, and I truly, truly enjoyed it so much. The writing is great. It was scary and if you're thinking well I've seen the movie so I'm not gonna read the book please read the book because it's different from the movie it's so different number nine this month is the nightingale by Kristen Hanna this is a story about two sisters Vianne and Isabel who are estranged sisters they are they lost touch over the years because Vianne kind of settled down and got married and Isabel was younger and felt kind of abandoned and left behind and so she was trying to make her own life and kind of forge her own path and it takes place in Paris or in France during World War II. The story starts right before Germany invades France and it goes through the invasion through the end of the war. This book absolutely destroyed me and if you have watched my Reading Rush vlogs you will have seen what this book did to me because I cried very hard while reading it. This book has beautifully written characters, atmospheric writing that makes you feel like you're in Paris, France while all this is going down. It has spies, it has tension, it has romances that are forbidden because the world feels like it's ending and they don't know what to do. And it's just a beautiful story about two women who are both trying to survive in their own way and are trying to rekindle their relationship and are really heroes in every aspect of the word. So I highly recommend this. It was a hard read. It was not a quick, light, easy read, but it's definitely worth it. And I truly, truly loved this book. Number eight is Pet by Akweke Mezi. And let me tell you, I absolutely love this. This is a story that is kind of, I would describe it as like a dystopian, utopian story that takes place in a town called Lucille. And Lucille is a place where all monsters have been eradicated. And it describes that monsters are what we would consider like horrible people, people who are committing awful crimes, people who are out to hurt other people. There are no monsters in Lucille. And it is about a little girl named Jam, who is transgender, so it is a fantastic transgender rep in my opinion. She accidentally bleeds on her mother's painting, and when she does, a creature comes out, and that creature's name is Pet, and Pet is a hunter. And Pet comes out and tells Jam that they are hunting together for a monster that is in Lucille. And Jam doesn't believe that there's a monster, and she finds out that the monster is in her best friend's house. And so she has to kind of work with this pet and find the monster that is still out there. It was so beautiful, and the writing was fantastic, and the story was amazing, and it hurt so bad to read. It was short, it was very quick. I listened to the audiobook, and I would highly recommend it because the audiobook voices especially for Pet, and the description of Pet was so good. I just really recommend it because I just felt so in the story and so connected. Again, this is one that I read in one day, so it's very quick. I am going to buy this book physically because I want to go in and underline things. I need to pull out my favorite quotes. Number seven this month is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. And I 
absolutely love this story. This is a story about Imani, who is a senior in high school, and she got pregnant as a freshman, and so she has a daughter, and she is basically figuring out her life as she is graduating high school and moving on to the real world, and she's navigating relationships, and essentially just how to follow your dreams and find what you're truly meant to do, even if it's not the traditional path that everyone else takes. And this story was so inspirational. The writing was fantastic. I absolutely am obsessed with Imani and with Malachi, who is the man in the story. It all is just so beautiful. I don't know what else to say. Some of my favorite aspects of this book are that it includes a lot of descriptions of food because Imani's passion is cooking and so it has a lot of discussions about food, descriptions about food, writing that is talking about food but it's alluding to something that doesn't have anything to do with food. It's just beautiful. There are a couple recipes in this book that are like Imani's recipes for a fantastic day or something like that and it's just so sweet. Something else I love about this book is that the chapter headers all have a piece of fruit or some kind of food at the top and it's just those little details that I am I absolutely love in books. So please 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 listen to the audiobook for this because that's what I did or read it. It's fantastic. Number six this month is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I have I've talked about this to death in my Reading Rush vlogs but this is a gothic horror story about Noemi who is a Mexican woman who gets a letter from her cousin that says she's being trapped by her husband in this house and she can't escape and she's dying and if her cousin Noemi does not come save her that she will die in that house. So Noemi goes to try to save her cousin from whatever's going on and has this whole like monster house yellow wallpaper vibe where she's stuck in this house and is trying to figure out what the heck is going on and there's a paranormal element there's a little bit of a romance in there it felt like something was sitting on my chest the whole time i read this it felt like i was literally living in a fog i it was so creepy and atmospheric and made me feel like i had no idea what was going on and i just really was into it like it had everything i wanted in a gothic horror novel it had a feminist woman a fashionable feminist woman in the 50s who stood up for herself and was the hero of her own story i love it number five this month is the name of the wind by patrick rothfuss this is an adult fantasy novel about a man named quilth who is telling the story of how he became this legend that he is essentially it is a story that goes from childhood up to maybe 18 years old and then every once in a while there's an interlude where it is Quoth as an adult man telling the story to this man named Chronicler who is writing his whole story down. I am absolutely obsessed with this book. It had so many things that I love about adult fantasy including magic, including a university for students who are learning magic. It has music. Oh, the descriptions about music in this absolutely make me sick. Yeah, it's so great. I'm very excited to read the second book. It is a trilogy and the third book came out this year. And so I am ready. The entire back of this book is blurbed by Lin-Manuel Miranda. So if you trust his opinion over mine, and I agree on the same thing, you have to read this book. Number four this month is Heartstopper, which is a graphic novel by Alice Oseman. It is a story about Charlie, who is an openly gay, high-strung overthinker who plays the drums, and Nick, who is a cheerful and soft, bold rugby player, and they become friends. Nick is starting to question his sexuality because he feels like their friendship is more than a regular friendship to him and so now he's thinking maybe I have feelings for Charlie and it's just a beautiful graphic novel about the two of these super soft gentle loving boys who play music together and build snowmen together and play with their dog together and it's just so sweet and I absolutely loved it and I cannot wait to read the second and third volumes of this because let me tell you the first graphic novel ends on a cliffhanger and it's 
a freaking gut-wrenching one. It destroyed me. Honestly, this whole book destroyed me. All of the Heartstopper was, I, I couldn't stop reading it. I read it in one day. It was an ebook. I downloaded it because it was available from the library. And I just, all the way through it because it was fantastic. Coming in at number three this month is The Giver by Lois Lowry. This is an all-time favorite of mine. I'm not surprised it came in in the top three this month because it's in my top all-time favorite books. If you don't know the story of The Giver, it is a story that takes place in a dystopian world where everything is the same. Nobody has any differences. There are no colors that exist in the world. Everything is gray. It's essentially a story about Jonas, who is about to turn 12, where at your 12th ceremony, you find out what job you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. And he's given the job of the receiver of memories and he has to go meet with the giver and they transfer memories and he is like the keeper of all of the memories for the village. It's beautiful. It is just a quintessential classic book in my opinion. I don't have anything else to say about it. If you haven't read The Giver yet, please read The Giver. Number two this month is The One by John Mars. This is a thriller that focuses around the idea that a DNA test has been created that can tell you who your perfect match is, who your soulmate is. And in this world, it has ended marriages, it has led to millions of people falling in love and finding their one. And then there are a lot of people who send their DNA in and don't find a match yet because their one hasn't submitted their DNA or is already married or something like that. And it focuses on five different people who all submit their DNA and find their match. And I'm not gonna tell you anything else because every one of those different characters has a huge plot twist. Nothing in any of these stories that you're seeing goes the way you expect it to. I will give you a little bit of a spoiler. One of the characters is a serial killer. So that was exciting to read about. <laughs> it was just such a fast paced, absolutely thrilling, very satisfying book. The ending was very satisfying. The whole point of the story was such an incredible concept to me. So it just was really, really great. Coming in at number one, my favorite book of the month, Felix Ever After by Case and Callender. I loved this. But so this book is a young adult contemporary romance, I'd say. It is about Felix, who is a transgender boy who is attending this art school over the summer and is trying to be an artist. At the beginning of the summer semester, somebody creates a gallery of pictures of Felix before he transitioned, and all of the pictures are accompanied by Felix's dead name. So Felix is absolutely devastated by this. It is so incredibly insensitive and hurtful, it just really destroys him. And so he decides that he is going to get revenge. And so this is essentially a revenge plot story, but it's also so much more. I love that Felix isn't a perfect protagonist. He has flaws and he owns up to them and he confronts those flaws and confronts those like moral ambiguities and sometimes the morally wrong things that he's done or is doing and talks them through or at least acknowledges that they happened and I just truly truly loved it. There are so many tropes, romance tropes happening in here. I'm not going to tell them to you because it'll spoil it for you and it's one that I haven't stopped thinking about the characters. I haven't stopped thinking about the lessons that were embedded in it. The story focused so much on acceptance of yourself and loving yourself and forgiveness and taking charge for your own destiny. It just, it was so great. I, of all the books I'd recommend this month, please pick that one up. It has fantastic representation in it. It has a group that Felix goes to visit where they talk about gender identity. And that's one of the other things that I truly love about Felix as a character is that he starts out in the book saying, I'm, I'm transgender, I'm a transgender boy. And throughout the book, he's still questioning his gender identity. And it demonstrates throughout the story that that is okay. It's okay to not know 100% 
what your sexuality is or what your gender is and to constantly be finding yourself and finding what labels fit you if no labels fit you. It just had such great representation. It had a great representation of somebody who is non-binary and identifies as they them. It was great. 10 out of 10. I can't recommend it enough. That's gonna be all for me today, friends. If you sat through all of that, thank you for watching. Comment down below if there are any books that you are going to pick up now. Please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye, friends.